they I, they're really a lot of fun. Uh, let me get your comments on the use of VoiceThread uh, since we got everybody uh, together. Please uh, please feel free to those of you who have used it. What uh, what have you thought about it so far? Voice threads. Well, this is Richard. Uh, I like it. Uh, I'm not used to seeing myself on a camera, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of uh, how you looked to others when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's really good that uh, you know we have that technology. Uh, again, it uh, it gives us more um, interaction in that you have, you, you know, like you were saying, it's more, uh, you can see facial expressions, body gestures, mm -hmm. and um, it, it just makes it a, a more attractive uh, way to communicate. Thank you, Richard. Who else? Uh, could I get some other people to weigh in on VoiceThread here? Let's see, uh, who else is here who has done VoiceThread? Uh, Can you hear me, Professor? Yes, I hear you, Ed. Please go right ahead. Yeah, this is uh, – sure, it looks like it would be uh, a nice thing to use. I'm just – I've never communicated in that manner. I've always typed answers on a discussion board. So uh, I didn't know if I was being heard. I found out I was on private. So I just – there was some confusion, which with using it for the first time. I suppose with practice and and uh, and getting used to it. Let me ask I you this, appreciate Ed. Appreciate it more. Yeah. If everything were perfect, if you were an experienced user of VoiceThread, uh, tell us about your reactions to it then. Oh, if I if I was experienced at using it and comfortable, that is the key because I've never used it before. Uh, I think I'd like it a lot. Why? Um, but again, uh, just would take time to to get familiar with it. But remember, yeah, Ed, we're not I, I, we're not dealing with that. We're not we're not dealing with the we're not dealing with the learning curve. We're we're, we're looking at its potential for teaching. So comment on its okay. potential for teaching. I think it has a real high potential for teaching because I would uh, imagine that uh, you know it's available for kids to access and at any time they want. Um, uh, you, you know, you can be very flexible in whatever content you okay. want to present. Okay. Uh, you know, you can put a YouTube on there and speak. Uh, again, it's just getting used to the uh, this, the program itself and using it. Once I'm able to do that, then sure, I think it'd be a, a real powerful tool. Okay. Uh, any any other? Thank you, Ed, for those. Uh, any other uh, comments for uh, VoiceThread? I think if you're doing online, it helps put a face and even mannerisms to maybe who you're talking to. So it's a little better than just words on paper or words on the screen. Uh, one of the, um, and I'm, oh, actually, this is a video that I'm thinking about is actually in week four. But in a week four, you'll see a video that present, presents you some statistics which say that 97% of our communication is nonverbal. Ninety-seven percent of our communication is nonverbal, and that those nonverbal elements uh, consist of uh, gestures, facial expressions, and what's called prosody or vocal expressions, uh, rate, picture, jun uh, juncture. Uh, and other prosody uh, elements. So whenever you're talking about adding voice thread, you're you're talking about adding back uh, a, a lot of that 97 percent that we that we didn't have. Okay, thank you for those uh, comments. The uh, another another assignment that you had, and I will I will put this in the um, in the window here for us. Had has to do with voking, and I don't think she's here. Is is uh, Tamra here? Oh, excuse me. I, I'm I'm on I'm not I'm on the wrong thing. The uh, uh, selecting technology tools. Yeah, here you, you continue to be building or or constructing a part of your final assignment, 
Uh, last week, uh, you did one part of your final project, um, and this week you're doing a second part. And this part, all you have to do is to make a list of tools that you think are going to be applicable to the lesson that you're planning. You aren't writing the lesson yet. You're still you're still planning that lesson. So please keep that in mind. And uh, here you uh, you see that you can do it in tabular form. There's also an assignment to example there that you can click on and you can you can go to that link as well and you can even even download it from here right now if you want to. Uh, but that presents you a model assignment that you can use as as well. Jessica. It's just oh oh Jessica who had done um were you reading my mind there? <laughs> that yeah, yeah Jessica had uh had used Voki a, a, a lot already and she uh, she even has has a classroom set up uh, using Voki and so that's uh, if, she, if she's here I would love to get her comments on that Jessica are, are you here I'll take a look around the uh, room again here see if she is she was here I don't know where she went oh okay I saw her does anybody else use the Voki classroom in their work? Nobody else? Okay. This is a lecture called the Human Avatar. And basically it is part of the presentation that I gave at the Sloan C conference in San Francisco. The key aspects of it that I'd like for you to focus on are the advantages of using an avatar. Here you see an example of an animated avatar, which is the kind of avatar that uh, Voki offers. But there, uh, a, a video, a digital video version of yourself is also considered an avatar. And the main thing that I want you to focus on here are the benefits of using avatars and some of the uh, best practices of using avatars of yourself. And remember, we're defining avatars here simply as any digital representation of yourself online. Then comes, <laughs> then comes the tool time, Voki. And if you guys have any questions about any of this, please just let me know, and I'll be happy to stop and uh, answer whatever questions you have. But for this tool time, you are to go to Voki, create a Voki avatar using your voice, and then post that voice-activated avatar on a blog. And as we talked about, I think, uh, last week, uh, it's fine for you to use any existing blog you already have. I'm, I have no favorites when it comes to, you know, software. Um, now, also as part of this uh, post, you also see some news stories that I dug up that have to do with what might be some remarkable findings for people who are more than 30 years old. And that's certainly true in my case and Ed's case and uh, uh, Robert's case too. Right, Robert? Richard? Uh, excuse me, I said Robert. Yes. Richard? Uh, I, I was just naming all the people who are definitely over 30 years old, and I included myself, Ed, and you. Uh, definitely. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Just a little body, just, just in, not in my mind. My mind still tells me I'm 17, 18. Oh, absolutely, yeah, there we go. absolutely, Ed. I am. I am a skinny 17 year old, ready to rock. You better believe it. Uh, but uh, these findings, um, unless you've been rocking and rolling in in the uh, online gaming world, might come as a little bit of surprise to you, and that is that video games <clears throat> are overtaking in in many cases have overtaken uh, television uh, as a form of entertainment for the digital natives that we're now teaching or going to teach the impl implication for that for teaching is is um, profound I'm sure that you guys could probably brainstorm a little bit about what those implications are 
that you will be teaching or are teaching students who have never known life without an avatar and who spend the majority of their recreational time uh, playing video games as opposed to watching television. So any kind of comments on that that you guys want to make? This, uh, this actually doesn't surprise me because um, this is Michael I can't tell you how many times I've been I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a classroom and had a student ask me uh, do you play uh, Gears of War or do you play special, uh, special ops or, um, <laughs> or all that and I, I have to say no I, I don't play video games so this is not that surprising to me Michael I got good news for you buddy yes you're playing one now. Second yeah, Life. I know for the first time. <laughs> Second Life uh, is a game. Whenever games are used in education, they they go by the name Serious Games, among others. But you are definitely playing a game right now, my friend. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, well, we'll save it for a little bit of a later discussion. I want to go ahead and get, get started on, on our tour before, before time runs out. Now, I want to kind of step back here, and I want to invite anybody who's not my friend to be my friend so that I can keep track of you. Erica, I just invited you to be my friend. Let's see. Jennifer, I'm going to invite you to be my friend. Please accept. I promise not to push you, bite you like a vampire, or any of the other kinds of terrible things that happen sometimes. In, um, yeah, some of these vampire bites are actually take control of your avatar if you get bitten by certain, certain uh, vampires. Okay, have I asked everyone to be, my, to be my friend who is currently present? How about no uh, Waldrus? Okay, let me let me pull up my my friends list and make sure that I got everybody before we start this tour. Because if if I if I lose you and you're on my friends list, I can always get you back. Okay, I got Waldhulus Begs. Please listen for your name. Uh, Waldhus Begs, Erica, Jennifer. Lori, Richard, Tech Dummy, and that's it. Anybody's name I did not call. I didn't hear my name, oh, Professor Ed, Ed Winsinger. Okay, Ed. Winsinger. Please accept my friendship. And who was the other person? Dominguez JJ. Jessica. Okay. Yeah, 